Welcome back across Nevada to Face to Face. We're introducing you to some of the candidates in some of the most contentious primary races for the legislature. Today, a state senate seat likely to be decided in the primary. Dennis Nolan's been in the legislature for 15 years. He's a target because of a voting record that has sometimes made him unpopular with conservatives. He joins us along with his Republican challenger in the primary, Elizabeth Halseth. Thanks to both of you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thank you for having us. All right. This has gotten unusually nasty, and I, I'm really stunned, actually, by the radio ad that you're running right now. Uh, and you're criticizing Senator Nolan for testifying as a character witness for a friend who was charged with the sexual assault of a teenager. It's an amazing ad. I want people to hear it. Six years ago, my teenage daughter was raped. Her attacker, a close friend of State Senator Dennis Nolan. Senator Nolan's website claims he works to protect children from predators. That is, unless the rapist is one of his friends. At the trial, Senator Nolan was a character witness for my daughter's rapist, whom the jury only took two hours to find guilty. What kind of a person defends a child rapist who sexually assaults our kids? Vote against Senator Dennis Nolan. Tell him that defending child rapists is not okay. This message paid for by Elizabeth Halseth for State Senate 9. Have you heard this ad, Senator? Yes, I have. And what was your reaction? You know, John, I think this is a typical sleazy Washington-style politics. Um, I was uh, asked to, I wasn't asked, I was actually subpoenaed by the Public Defender's Office to come and testify on behalf of a friend who I've known for years who grew up with my kids. I was subpoenaed, I testified, I appeared in court, I told the truth, and that's all I can do, and that's all anybody can expect from a, uh, a citizen in our judicial system. Did you regret doing it at all? Because, no. because there was a story actually that you, you said the district attorney's office actually pressured you to do this by saying, uh, by, by talking about if you were going to be a character witness for this guy, this could hurt your political career, as if that had to be told to you. Yeah. No, actually, I don't regret it at all. I, um, I knew both the, uh, the accused and I knew the victim. And frankly, I believe that the, uh, the accused was innocent of the crime that was committed. I think uh, the, uh, it wasn't a sexual assault, and, and the details of the trial uh, pour that out. But he also, was convicted, correct? Uh, he was convicted, but he appealed. And In the, two uh, hours of, of the jury deliberating, he after was convicted. The, after the jury mm -hmm. had been held for 14 hours and ran late into the early hours of the morning. But that being the case, the Supreme Court has obviously looked at this and uh, they see merit in, in his appeal and have All accepted right, no. it. All right, but they have, they have not ruled on it yet. I, I really have a simple question for you. What, what's the point of, of this ad? I mean, this, the, why should he not have done what he did? Well, listen, everything in our ad was a fact. It's a I fact. didn't say it wasn't factual. I said, I mean, you can bring up a lot of facts, but why is why is it relevant? I mean, let me ask you a question. If you had a if you had a friend, someone you knew who was accused of a crime, wouldn't you do the same thing, or would you just turn your back on the person? You don't use your position as a state senator to influence a jury, especially in a rape case against a minor. So you're saying he he used his the fact that he was an elected official to try to sway the jury? How did he do that? Listen. The but how did he do that? Seriously, I want to know how he used his position as a state senator. Yeah. He as a state senator, you, you know, like that's no bad too. judgment. That is bad judgment and inappropriate for a state senator to take a stand to defend a, a, rape, uh, a rapist. What, did he not respond to a subpoena? He can't help the fact that he's a state senator, can he? I mean, I know you want to help the fact that he's a state senator, but at the time he mm -hmm. couldn't. Could he? Sure. Listen, it is bad judgment to do what he did. So he should have just said, I'm not going to respond to a subpoena? Well, you know, show me the subpoena. Oh, you don't, she doesn't believe that you had a subpoena? Um, she can check with the public defender's office. And when you're subpoenaed, uh, regardless of why, you know, good citizens respond to subpoenas. What I don't understand here, you want to criticize Dennis Nolan. We're going to get to his voting record in a second. It's not being conservative enough, and you're more conservative. Okay, make that case. But why bring up this kind of stuff? I mean, the guy did something. Maybe you think he used poor judgment, but, but, but I mean, he was subpoenaed in a criminal trial. What is the point here? Listen, as a sexual assault victim myself, if one of my state senators got onto a witness stand and said, um, and testified on behalf of my attacker, and then said that my attacker was a good guy and the attack was consensual, I don't know how I would feel. All right, I want, I, I want to get off of this topic. I really do want to get on, on, onto the voting records. First of all, I didn't even know that state senators were held in such great regard that they could influence anybody. But that's, <laughs> that's a subject for a different program. When we come back, we're going to talk about Dennis Nolan's voting record. Back in a moment. John Ralston wants to hear from you. Call 702-633-8748. Send an email to john at ralstonfacetoface.com. 
Welcome back across Nevada to Face to Face. We're having a debate between the incumbent Dennis Nolan. He's a state senator and his challenger in the Republican primary, Elizabeth Halseth. All right. Uh, you're kind of a liberal, aren't you, uh, Senator Nolan? Isn't that what people are saying about you? The, the NPRI, which is Nevada Policy Research, and it says you have the fourth worst voting record of all Republicans in the legislature. Here's what they say. On spending and taxation legislation in the 2009 session, the incumbent voted 94% of the time with Democratic Majority Leader Stephen Horsford. The incumbent voted to pass legislation included the room tax hike, new worker regulations, $800 million tax increase, higher fuel taxes, new rental car taxes, and taking property tax revenue from Clark County and giving it to the state. Are you in the wrong party, sir? <laughs> John, uh, who said that? <laughs> That's NPRI, and who is NPRI? Well, they're, they're a conservative organization. They're, they're a conservative organization that monitors bills based upon how bills are passed. They don't sit in the legislative process and have to sit down and negotiate the way legislative bills are passed or the way the budget is passed. And frankly, every bill that is initiated comes up for a vote. You either vote yes or no on it. If you're going to work to cut taxes, you've got to be in the discussion. You've got to be in the debate. Otherwise, you can sit back, and we have plenty of people already in the legislature that sit and do nothing but vote no, Trust no, me, no on everything. Trust me, she wants to be in the debate. That's why she's, that's why she's here tonight. She, the, she the, question to I have for you, the question I have for you is, do you stand by that vote? Yes, I stand by all my votes. All right. Absolutely. You stand by the vote to raise taxes okay. on Nevadans in our oh, district. No, wait a second. I'm, I'm asking the questions here. I stand by the vote let, that let I me ask you to a cut taxes on our constituents, and that's exactly what I you did. You actually raised one billion dollars in taxes. Okay, this but let me last ask you. Well, let me ask you a question. You're, you're against ahead. that. In fact, you yeah. have in all capital letters, "I will not raise taxes." What would you have done differently? Let's tell, let Listen, me hear what you would have cut. Let me hear the sure. billion dollars you would have cut mm -hmm. out of the budget. Listen, raising taxes has never been the answer. That's not what I asked you. You're criticizing him. Sure. You're, he's fair game. He, he has a record. Tell me, mm -hmm. tell me the billion dollars you would have cut instead of doing what Dennis Nolan we did. We need to start with zero-based budgeting. That doesn't answer the question. Yes, absolutely, you, it does. It does not. We need to start during that session. On. What did you cut? What would you have cut? Dennis Nolan said, "I'm not going to cut." I don't care what he's saying now about tax cuts. He mm -hmm. voted to raise taxes. You're saying you wouldn't have. So tell me the 800. You, you know, don't even find a billion. Just find 800 million for me where you would have. Cut. Well, first of all, we need to start looking at PERS, which is our public employees. That's not the general fund. That is not the general fund that you're talking about now. Well, all I'm saying is, listen, people listen. run for the legislature, mm -hmm. they attack the incumbents for their voting records. Where are the solutions? You never vote to raise taxes. That is never, never. the answer. Never. Mm -hmm. No. That is not the answer but you don't to know put you people back to work. What? Right now, I have been meeting with the voters of my district for eight mm -hmm. months, and what they want is to get back to work, and raising taxes is not going to get them but back But you don't have any alternative to what he did. Absolutely. Uh, First she, of all, she, we, start no we start with zero-based budgeting. We start with zero-based budgeting. Zero-based budgeting, the majority of states don't zero-based budget because it forces higher spending in government because departments and divisions push to spend their budgets before the end of the year. We need to start with zero-based budgeting. You said that about zero-based budgeting. And you also make a point on your website of talking about how these businesses would come to Nevada, mm -hmm. but are jumping over Nevada from California to go to Arizona and Texas, I, I believe you say, because of the business tax climate here. They don't even have a business tax. The, the reason they're not coming here is because our education system, yeah. they think, is a joke. Our, education, a and our education and our budget, go, our education and our economy go hand in hand. Businesses mm -hmm. are not going to come to Nevada if we are dead last for education. So but they're not, do, they're, they are going to come here. Fix. They are going to come here if we don't have a business tax, which we don't. The We've they're doubled not our business licensing fees thanks to Senator Dennis Nolan who voted for that. Senator Dennis Nolan has raised taxes on what we drive, on what we buy, on where we work, and if we had any listed, money, listed the tax if we had any money let him, let him over respond. to John, get, let, him uh, let him respond. Uh, let him respond. Uh, let him respond. Elizabeth needs to deal in reality. I mean, she I she she has, let, she let has, she has, she has, she has a Please let him respond. She's bought her documents and she has a list of of what she thinks the legislative process is all about. Yeah, nobody wants to raise taxes. First of all, uh, let's put that out on the record. Nobody wants to raise taxes. As a matter of fact, the founding fathers of this country were the ones who instituted a taxation policy, and it's in our constitution. And legislators are the ones, although you've already advocated it by signing your tax pledge, so you've already given away part of the constitutional responsibility that you have. You know to what? I'd like to finish. No, we can't. I'm sorry. We're out of we're out of time. Thanks to both of you for coming on. I appreciate your willingness to debate. I really do.